Hello, everyone. The purpose of this video is to give you a brief about Philo and the products we offer. Hi, I'm Anup from Philo's Solutioning and Support Team. I'm here to tell you a bit more about Philo. Please feel free to comment below or drop a message on our Discord community channel if you have any questions and our team will do our best to answer them. Joining link in the description below. In this video, we will be covering an overview of Philo's front-end modules. We'll also be looking at how the front-end SDK flow would look. Lastly, we're going to end by taking a look at our backend APIs. Let's go ahead and jump right in. To give you a brief about what we do, Philo is basically a universal API for creator data. With Philo's integration to your app, you can get continuous access to verified creator permission data from different platforms like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and many more. Let's take a look at this slide. Over to the left-hand side, you have the social platforms which creators connect to using Philo, which can then be used to fetch relevant identity, engagement, and income data. To the right-hand side, you can see developers that collect these data from different platforms and use it within their use cases. Let's take a look at some of these logos. In this slide, you can see who is using Philo and for what use cases. For the most part, we cover influencer marketing, financial services for creator economy, which is fintech, and creator tools like Media Kit, campaign analytics, dashboard to brands, etc. Here, you can see the different products we offer, which bucket into each of the use cases we mentioned earlier. For platform connection and collecting consent from creator, we have the connect endpoint, which works in tandem with our SDK. This enables creators to connect their platform account to your application using Philo, which is then used to fetch their data and is then supplied to you. We have identity API endpoints to get access to creators' profile information, such as name, username, permanent link to the profile, number of followers, subscribers, etc. You can also fetch demographic information of the creator's audience like country, city, age, gender distribution, etc. These data points are available based on the platform creator connects to. Then we have the engagement endpoints which allow you to fetch data related to content published by creators like the URL, number of likes, dislikes, shares, the comments or the content itself. You can also fetch commenter details like count of the comment, the reply count, commenter ID, et cetera. Our income endpoints help you fetch data about a creator's earning through transaction payouts and balance. Transaction is the amount generated by the platform from mediums like ads, subscriptions, et cetera. Payout is the total amount of money credited to the creator's account. And balance is the total balance that is yet to be paid to the creator. Please take a look at this slide. This is a foot view of how it all connects together. We have the functional layer, which consists of the platforms we cover, the products we offer, that's the data points that we offer. Then there's this connection layer, which allows your users to connect their platforms to your application. This is basically the SDK layer. This layer takes care of all the permissions and validations that are required for you to connect your platform. The data management layer includes the data fetchers, invokes platform APIs to fetch data from different products, 
It also includes data fetch policies and the error handlings, exceptions from the platform API, rate limiting, etc. The notification layer allows you to send webhooks and event notifications to notify you about the data that's being added or updated. This is across all the data points like profile, content, income, et cetera. Last but not the least, we have the security layer. Data is encrypted and stored with the help of this layer. Let's take a look at how the integration works. There are four main sections to it. Webhooks. Fillow uses webhooks to send programmatic updates about creator's data. That is when the data is added, updated, or deleted. Fillow sends an event account connected when the creator links a new work platform. Following this, you will receive profiles, contents, and income webhooks whenever the respective data is synced and ready to fetch. These webhook events will include the account ID, profile ID, content ID, and the relevant income IDs that you could use in your R APIs to fetch relevant data. You can have a look at the example on the right-hand side. You may use the IDs in the webhooks to make API calls across data points for which we will fetch the data. You start by creating a user on Philo for every creator who needs to share their data with you using the Create a User API. The ID returned in the response can then be used to uniquely identify your users even when they return to your app. Next, you will have to create an SDK token using the user ID. The token can now be used to initialize the Philo SDK and start the account connection process. We return an expires at info with the SDK token. Post that, you will have to regenerate this token. This token is valid precisely for one week from the time of creation. Remember to set the value of the product parameter, identity, identity.audience, engagement, engagement.audience or income in the API request. This will determine the data points you can fetch for that particular user. Initialize the front-end SDK using the token and launch the SDK. This is where the users will go through the Philo Connect UI to give consent to data being shared with you. Depending upon the platform, web, iOS, Android, Flutter, et cetera, you will need to call the associated SDK function to launch this page. Your users will then authenticate themselves and authorize the data to be shared with you. To summarize, this is our front-end UI model that the user goes through to select the social platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, et cetera, and provide consent to share the data. You can also customize the screen with your logo and brand colors. You, you can initialize the SDK with the token created and few other configuration parameters like the one given below. Client display name, the name of your app that you want the creators to see while granting access. Environment, the mode in which you wish to use the SDK sandbox of production. User ID, the unique user ID parameter that is returned by Philo API when you create a user. And the work platform ID. This is the ID associated with a specific work platform. Use this if you want the creator to skip the platform selection screen and be directly taken to a specific creator platform to link their accounts and share their data. Each work platform ID is associated with a specific platform. Let's go through the front-end connection flow. Philo SDK is launched within your app. The creator selects the work platform to connect. You can have a look at the third screenshot here. Creator enters the credential and authenticates themselves on the platform login screen. Creator enters the multi-factor authentication if needed, provides the permission for the data being shared. After a successful login, the account is connected 
and the user returns to your app. Philo provides official SDK for different programming languages and platforms. We currently have SDK for web, iOS, Android, Flutter, and React Native, or use WebView if you prefer. Let's do a live demonstration of the Philo SDK. You can yourself try this out by going to app-connect.getphilo.com. Once the SDK is initialized, you'll get to a screen similar to this. Let's click on continue. This is the platform grid wherein the users are allowed to select the platform they want to connect. You'll have to provide specific permissions here to connect your platform. Let's try to connect Facebook. Your Facebook page will be connected after you provide the relevant permissions to connect. Once you click on done, you will return to your application. You see here, one of the Facebook page is connected. Here you see all the profile details fetched related to that specific Facebook page. Let's have a look at the backend flow. Once the creator has connected the accounts, you can listen to events on your front end to be notified about the state of the connection and listen to the webhooks to start firing the APIs. Diving into the backend API, we are focusing on connect identity and engagement products. Diving into the backend API, we are focusing on connect identity, engagement, and income. Our documentation provides detailed information about all of these APIs and the relevant attributes that you can fetch making these API calls. Like I mentioned earlier, you create a user by providing the name and the external ID. The external ID is the unique ID for the user set by you. This can be anything you wish and will help you with mapping your user to the fellow users. Then you have create the SDK token, like we mentioned earlier. The ID that you receive after creating a user is used to create an SDK token. You would be passing the relevant product IDs. This will determine the data points that you would like to fetch for this specific user. You have retrieve all work platforms, which will return you all the work platform IDs. You can have a look at the response example on the right-hand side. You have retrieve all users, which will again retrieve all the users for your domain. Retrieve all accounts will retrieve all the accounts with the user ID and the work platform. Once you provide the user ID and the work platform ID, you will be able to retrieve all the accounts for that specific user. You can also retrieve a user by using the external ID. You can specify the external ID and retrieve details about that user. Retrieve all accounts. You can provide the user ID to retrieve all the accounts specific to that user. You can see the details of the attributes that you will receive in the response here. Disconnecting an account, you can provide an account ID and disconnect that specific user's account. Similarly, let's take a look at identity. You have retrieved a profile or retrieve all profiles. This will give you detailed information about that profile. This is the identity information that you are going to fetch. You will find the profile ID in the profile webhooks that you receive. You can use that profile ID to return details of that specific profile. You can use refresh a profile to refresh the data for that particular profile by choice. 
retrieve audience demographics will give you the audience demographics for that particular profile. Similarly, you have engagement. You have retrieve all content items for a specific account. You have refresh content items. You can use this to refresh a specific account. By default, we provide 90 days of data. If you wish to fetch greater than 90 days of data, you will have to use the historic APIs. The difference between content and content groups, contents are single content items. Content groups are group of contents, for example, an album on Instagram. You can retrieve all comments for a specific content ID. You could provide the account ID and the content ID. You could fetch comment details using these API. You have the income API, which can fetch you transaction details, payout details, and balance details, as mentioned earlier. If you have a look at our API documentation, all of the parameters have a description and an example given below for you to have a better understanding. To conclude, these are APIs through which we fetch and provide relevant data. In the next video, we are going to walk you through a live coding demo of how you could set this all up locally and test it. Thank you for watching this. Have a great rest of your day.